All right. David Language. Langlois? Langlois. 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 Welcome to Plug and Play Productions, gentlemen, yeah, with Ro Roman, uh, the what? Rawad. Rawad, sorry. <laughs> All right, explain uh, what's going on. Well, sorry for interrupting you earlier. I didn't know what you were talking about. Let's leave on from there. Yeah, no, we are just catching up. and seeing each other. And what, 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 All right. Yeah, kind of. We were talking about the... So I'm working with the acoustics on there to make me louder than I am. Okay. So. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Yeah, of course. I hope it's recording. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, welcome to my show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Tell us your director, producer. Yeah, I'm the DGC director. Uh, I'm also a producer. Nine feature films, 100 plus music videos, 60 plus commercials, and, uh, trying to bring a more stable film industry to Windsor. Fantastic. Yeah. This is Windsor Base, and and it's Windsor people. 519. Yeah. 519 Windsor Base Film Festival coming soon. Yeah. Because I want to build one here. I want to build. Uh, I want to do a movie first, mm -hmm. and then I told them if I can have some kind of thing that I can donate to this and make it worthwhile, yeah. and we bring it in, we pay for it, and we do it ourselves, and it does right, and, you know, I mean, do it right. You get people, Hello. and would have a room or a wall. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, for so. sure. No, it's, ex it's exciting. Uh, I was born and raised here, but I, uh, I uh, left in 97 to go to Vancouver to go to film school and just end up staying there. And uh, I'm still there. I, go, I come back we and forth. Uh, and uh, yeah, really. Uh, projected on no, no, no. Really excited uh, what I found here in Windsor. I had no idea there was such a, a booming film industry here, and cool people like you guys. Yes, uh, I I was introduced to this place, and I met wonderful people Thank like Road and Mark Mako, and uh, and these guys give me something to appreciate. And not only you can jive with them, you're yeah. doing the stuff they're doing. Yeah. I'm the manager, producer, director, composer of my own show. Okay. So I, I did uh, film a short film in the, in the parking lot, a little comedy skit, spoof. Okay. Now there's a sequel that's coming in here and I want to do all green screens nice. and some outside in the parking lot, but they're skits. Yeah. So I want to run it the same day we put cameras there, cameras in here, camera upstairs. There's going to be green screens. And we're having all these acts that people are doing. Okay? Great. When they do that act, and then they do their act, we got to go and do another act over there. Mm. With them or without them. It's a musical. Uh, I want to make it. So I, I would like, what kind of... In inspiration would you tell me if I'm trying to make my own movie trying to fluff it through dude yeah I have nothing well it's a grind man I'll tell you I have low-end stuff <laughs> I have you need a good uh, assistant director yeah uh, <laughs> assistant and a good cinematographer and then you're ahead, you're ahead of the game I'm sorry what's your name oh he I think he's pointing to, the... to me no you no. have the best assistant director in the <laughs> no, you're right there I am. Yeah, turn, turn the it. camera. Turn the camera just, on this I'm just gonna, you know, no, no need, no need, no need. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. He I, says no I, need. I, Should we turn your camera? Spotlight. Here, All right, we're gonna, 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 gonna put him on a camera. This is the best AD, first AD in, in Windsor. Yeah. Welcome to the well, show. Thank you. Here, Plug and play here. productions. <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> and what's your name? Uh, Idris. 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 Yeah. From what From company? Morocco. From Morocco, yeah. welcome to Windsor. Thank you. The armpit of Canada. Yeah. With the cheesy, tacky, radio host, cameraman, YouTube channel. Please add, subscribe to my station. Sure, yeah. Plug and play productions. Thank you. Sorry, guys. He's doing, he's doing like a, yeah, uh, David is, uh, is our guest today. And just yeah. like we'll talk like, as a Q&A about the filmmaking in Windsor. Nice. And yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, music music music. Music. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was over. No, no I am the show guy. Oh, no, no. I'm just behind the scenes. I'm the producer, director of my own show. <laughs> Welcome to Windsor. 
and uh, I apologize for interrupting, but we're still waiting for people. So oh, David, 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 yeah, David. it's still early. It usually oh, starts at quarter to eight. Vancouver. Yes. And did you see uh, producer, director, and filmmaker? Yeah. That's why we're here. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we met eight months ago. Yeah, in the summer. In the summer. June. Yeah. We did a TV. And movie. he can't he can't live without me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's true. You saved you saved the show. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, you know what? In a short movie, I was the main character. Yeah. Of the <laughs> <laughs> and also we did some shorts together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We miss you. I don't think it's going to be a very small house. Like your shoes. Is Amanda coming? <laughs> Amanda, her mother is so sick. Oh, I didn't. So she apologized at the last moment. Oh my goodness. Yeah, her mother is so sick. I seen Mitch, so. And, uh, and uh, Mitch, uh, 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 Mitch, so. Yeah, sure. It's like advocacy. So, since we're early, we have to work hard, you know. Yeah, I do my own show, too. Yeah, I do all my own, like, to produce this. I hear. Edit. Thank you for having me. It's true. And you, too, buddy. We're in Australia now. Now you know about it. This guy right here. Yeah, so, um, get back to Johnny Zipoletti. And you're from Oh, Nepal, that's oh, beautiful country. My God. I did. You. Call me, of course. All right. Then if you when text I was me in that number or email that, that, I'll send it to you. Essay okay. about Nepal. Yeah. 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 Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I forgot I the details. Yeah. It was about on Zoom. Yeah. And I do. Yeah. Uh, it was about habits. I had some oh, famous yeah. people come through Pretty here. Hard. Yeah. Like, who's the last big producer? You know, it's like GDP, uh, but not for yeah, uh, Something for happiness. Uh, yeah, it's for happiness. I have to Forget their names. Yeah. 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 And the ones are right. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll show you. Okay. And what's, what's the first language? So, we're going to show you. No, one of them. My site, I forget the guys. To him. Where are we going? No, I'm going to YouTube. I'm going to YouTube. These are wonderful people. And this is what I get for people. Same tree. So busy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like a really? Like I'm happy. Yeah. 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 How do you guys hear about this? Because people have been calling yeah, me and they're saying, I hear you. Uh, uh, cool. yeah. And yeah. another one in July. The big one is in July? Oh, yeah. It reminded me yesterday. I didn't even think we listened to anything. I because we're very close. When I've been doing so these are all the people that were, came here. Uh, I understand. There he is. I understand. I can't there he is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's like. It's like me with all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not speaking Spanish. No. And I put it on the floor. Oh, okay. I put it right down. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to sit here? No, 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 yeah, I got that in there. Spain, Central Morocco has been colonized by France. So you have those languages. Yeah, French, yeah, Spanish. Yeah, okay. What is it? We start, guys. Okay. So, thank you, David, for coming to the Windsor Center for film and digital media. Yeah, just about it. It's not fair for other people. Yeah, there's, it's not starting. We usually start at quarter to eight, or it's already going to be a long one. Five, four minutes. Yeah. Roll them. Why is that? Five more minutes. Are you recording? 24. Yeah. So, yeah. I always do. I come. Yeah, I've been coming for for months on end here, and I missed the last month, so I'm all excited. Do you this edit is out all the, uh, the, uh, the boring stuff, though? No, I play it all. Oh, yeah? Classical Arabic. Yeah. You've been rolling for a while. They're different. It's rolling. It's it's, it. it's not. Yeah, that's it. That's, right. that's you, it's it's the recorded live. Okay. Your own editing. No, I just keep. I do. I do. Yeah. Copy paste. Yeah. Look me up. Plug and play North productions, Cyprus. and you'll see the, the graphics and editing I do. I even I made a park a, uh, a movie in the parking lot here. A cheesy one. I don't know what I'm doing, but I used all my equipment, low end cameras. I could do it. The only thing I didn't use was my cell phone, because I can't do everything. Yeah, yeah. So that's. So. Tell us about directing a, like a movie well, through this place. Yeah, we'll start, we'll start <laughs> are, you, are you moderating this thing? No, I hope not. No, I'm we, just we, asking hypothetical oh, no, no, questions. We'll start in five minutes. I'm just, just curious. For someone to come. I think you're moderating, right? Yeah. 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 He's moderating. My, my AD sure, and Yeah, sense. after we start, yeah, yeah. I'll quit and I won't, I won't. Gotcha. 
No, he's we'll paused now. Just uh, waiting for like five, five more minutes. Five more minutes. I could do a proper yeah. interview with you later if you want to do that too, or we can just do like, if you have some questions, I can just straight answer them so there's no like lags in your video if you want to do that as well. Well, I figure we do it now and then we talk about it now and then I'll shut my face and we'll talk later. Okay. Whatever you want to do, man. Whatever you I'm, want to do. I'm here, I'm here just to... I just want to thank this, folks. these gentlemen, <laughs> Boad and Marco, meeting these guys. And, and, I, I and hope one day you will remember my name. <laughs> Mark. Mark. His name is Mark. Mark. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark. Mark. Get the camera and call me Mark, man. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Sorry. M-A-K. Mark. Mark. Mark Zuckerberg. That's how we do it. Let's get this handsome face on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Come here. Look at this guy. <laughs> Mr. M. Zoom Wait, in, man. zoom in. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, man. Oh, I can't do it all. That's too much, man. Then I put graphics in it. But I'm I don't know. I'm excited about it. Like, I, I'm always waiting for you to address me with a new name. <laughs> but it's not the same. Every time like you came with a new one. Today, Marco, nice. It's so nice. <laughs> I, li I like Marco. I like Marco. Yeah, I like Marco. What is, yeah, what like is Marco. your name? Any? Makram. Makram? Yeah. Makram. It's an Arabic name. It means the honor. He's from Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do the people call him? Please give me some money. Please give me some money. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, David, for uh, for coming today to the Windsor Center for Film and uh, Digital Media and Creative Arts. Yeah, thanks for having um, me. It's our pleasure, you know. Uh, we met like eight, eight months ago and, uh, on, a, on the set of Show and Tell. Yep, Show and Tell. So Which is now a uh, title You Can't Teach Love. It's a lifetime uh, romantic comedy. Yeah. Which is airing, I believe, in April. What's going on in Windsor? What's going on? A lot, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Tell us. Well, I don't know. I'm not part of the scene here. I just, I just yeah. Have to, what we are we preparing to do? Oh, what we're going to do? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, looking to bring a slate of TV movies here, essentially. Uh, basically, to um, just get a steady stream of movies going uh, every six weeks, be a new production. And these all have distribution. Uh, and it'll be a really good um, training ground for new filmmakers and then also for existing filmmakers and crew to basically. Uh, not have to have a day job and can actually work uh, mm. consistently in the film business. Okay, this is good. Um, okay, you are a producer and director. Yeah. Which one do you prefer, to be a producer or a director? Uh, well, they're different. Uh, one's more business, one's more creative. I'd have to say I've done more directing than producing, but I enjoy both for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Which one, like, the best for Directing, you? for sure. Directing. Yeah. Can you just tell us about, more about your career as a director? What did you do? When did you start? Like, it's more like, yeah, some up, somebody about, about your work. Well, uh, been fascinated by cinema since I was a little boy. I think like a lot of film lovers, you know, uh, just uh, a voracious appetite for uh, viewing cinema. And I uh, remember, you know, some of my fondest memories were going to the, to the theater with my dad. We used to see, you know, Chuck Norris films and uh, all these kung fu films and you know, I, I remember, I'm born in 1974, and I remember seeing in 1980 in its initial uh, theatrical release, Raging Bull, with my dad at the age of six. So probably not, you know, by today's standards, that would be like a no-no, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I was just seeing all this essential cinema at such a young age. And growing up in Windsor, uh, I didn't really know that there was a career uh, path for me as a filmmaker. and. Um, I was an avid skateboarder when uh, I was a teenager, and my parents had uh, one of those VHS side loader camcorders, a JVC, and me and my friends were just out there uh, making skateboarding films. So that's basically where it started for me, uh, was doing that as a teenager. And then um, moved to Vancouver in 97 to go to film school, and then just hit the ground running after that. Made my first film a year later. Uh, short or a feature? A feature film, yeah. Directly? Yeah. Well, I had some money put aside and uh, we made it uh, in 20 days. It's, uh, it was we shot in Super 16 millimeter and uh, took two years to make. Basically, the money I had was supposed to completely make and deliver the film. 
And by day six of 20, we spent the entire day, <laughs> which is you know, yeah. not, a, not a good feeling to be told that. OK, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, do you think that doing a feature film directly after you graduate from the school mm -hmm. is a big risk? Mm. Because usually filmmakers, they start doing short films. Yeah, I they never, like I never did. I mean, I did those skateboarding films. Yes, they did like a couple of short films to build up, to build uh, their like portfolio, to build their trust on the set, all the stuff, and then they they think about a feature film because you know feature is something very heavy. Yeah. Okay. More days of filming, more days of production. Yeah. Uh, maybe more cast. Yeah. So they train themselves with the short, and then they do the feature. Yeah. Doing a feature directly after you graduate is a big risk. Oh yeah. Well, it's a huge undertaking for sure. And like I said, I was putting in the money, and there's like, and then we had to get partners after because. We spent all the money day six, but uh, no, it, it was um, the way I see it. You have to just jump in. Either you know, if you want to do it, you just have to do it. And nowadays, you know, with digital cameras and phones and whatnot, I mean, now's the time to do it. There's really no excuses. When I started, you had to shoot in at least sixteen millimeter. Yeah, at least and, uh, and that you know, True. film film stock costs money. The processing costs money. The transferring to tape costs money. So right off the bat, you're already invested. A certain amount where now you can just get an SD card camera and, oh, yeah. and shoot something. So nowadays I say just go for it. You know, whatever you want to do. Another thing I should mention too about the, the film, it's, it was called The Hot Carl. And it was based on a short story that a friend of mine, Matt Formigan, wrote. And he, at the time he was writing for Hustler Canada, the, uh, the X rated magazine. And he had a column called The, um, the Dirty Life of Manny Forskin which was the, the title character in the film. So we already had like this audience, right, through the magazine, and uh, he wrote this short story, and we're like, dude, we gotta make this. So he turned out a script, and we just made it. Yeah. Uh, it was okay. crazy, really, to think about okay, it. Okay, let's talk a little bit like technical stuff. Yeah. Um, you as a director, how yeah. you prepare your script? Uh, like from, from the beginning, let's start from the lower stage. Yeah. You so I've, I've read it and I've decided I'm going to do it. You like write your script or you no. you work on a ready script? I work on a, a, a pre-made script. Okay, pre-made script. Yeah. How do you prepare your script from A to Z before well, going to the uh, to the production? Yeah, so on the TV movie side, it's already been like thoroughly developed. So really, it's a shooting script when I get it, and then I go and uh, I just execute it. Okay, I mean like on the paper, when you read the script, through your notes, oh how yeah. you take notes? I do, I do, I do, do, I do a down? very detailed shot list, okay. because I, again, coming from a film background, where, you know, film stock costs money, the processing, the transferring, you had to be very economical. So unlike a lot of filmmakers today, that they just leave it running and just do a lot of, they basically shoot a master in, for every angle. Uh, I in-camera edit as much as possible. And by doing that, I'm able to obviously save our cost and time. And then also in the editing room, there's less selection process. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm shooting what I'm gonna use. Okay, so uh, what I understood, like you shoot like the minimum? Yeah. And all you shoot, you use it in the, in the editing. Pretty so much. nothing on the floor? Well, there is, but you know, the multi multiple takes of say, a shot or a performance. But I'm not shooting a master, I'm not shooting a master and then going into over the shoulders and shooting the whole scene that way, and then going into close-ups, and then getting specials, like if I, if I want to do a push-in dolly, I, know, whatever. I just get the pieces I need, and then and just go from there. Mm. And again, it came out of necessity, guys, because like I said, my basically all my productions have been low budget, you know? Yeah. And uh, even yeah. though these TV movies are like million dollar budgets, but they don't go far when you're, you're working with union crews and uh, and you know, that, that money gets eaten up pretty fast. So um, it's all about being efficient, economical, and uh, it's just my pro my way of doing it. And also the, the filmmakers that I love, like Brian De Palma, Scorsese, William Friedkin, that's the way they shot. And their films have a certain look to them because they were directed, you know what I mean? Like properly yeah, directed, like, like I, I believe Tarantino said something, he goes, I direct, I don't select. You know, so he's not in the editing room after trying to piece it together. Now, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes yeah. what you're doing. So you don't want to be too stringent in your planning that you don't have something to fall back on. But usually, when you're on set shooting, you know if something's working or not, and if, it, and if, you, get, if you have it or not. And if you have to move on quickly, 
there's always ways to sort of pivot and, and maybe get a little extra coverage to, just as a safety. Yeah. Do you consider that this, what we are talking about now, is, is a language in directing? Like your language in directing is like this? Yeah. How much it took from you like time to discover this language? You know, each director in, in the world has it, its own language. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So of course, as you have like always low angles for the for the actor for the actor or the talent walking. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is a kind of language. Sure. How much it took time from you to discover your language? Yeah, I guess it's finding your voice, right? And I guess you, you find your voice more with confidence. So once you're confident behind the camera and you're confident, you know, directing, a, you know, a 65 person crew, mm -hmm. and and you're going in with a, a, a real vision for it, which, I mean, that's the only way you're gonna be confident is knowing what, what you want. Because if I went in unprepared and I had to direct a movie, I'd be scared shitless, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I'd be like, oh my God, is this gonna cut? You know, it's all pre-planned for me. So all the heavy lifting is done in, in pre-production. And to go back to what you're saying about short feature, you, you in either one of those formats, you're gonna develop your own voice and and learn that language, you know, because you're only going to learn by doing. Everything else is, you know, you can learn academically through it, you know, and, and, and you should, but really being in the trenches doing it, that's where you're really going to learn. Good. Yeah. Um, any questions from the audience before we continue? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, when you, so when you film <coughs> or when you direct as an editor, yeah. what are the risks of doing? such thing in not cutting together right yeah now uh, I have a lot of experience doing it so for me it's just second nature now and you know honestly there was never anything that didn't cut for me it, it just for some reason it, I just was able to envision it in my head and just get it onto paper so that I could just keep track of it and also an, another important <coughs> thing you got a block shoot just for efficiency, right? So when you know that you have uh, all this coverage that you're doing or moving the camera this way and this way, you might miss something. So what I also do, I'll do like a, a topography map. So I know if I have 18 setups in this scene, I know like six of them are pointing this way, five this way, maybe eight this way, you know what I mean? And then we're just block shooting it and just getting it on, basically just checking it off. So. If I have that system in place and I've already planned it, I know it's going to cut together. And then you get a good transition in between and you're, you're golden. And this is all written? Yeah, I hand write it on uh, the <coughs> pages of the script. Uh, Don't we have you go from script to, like, do you storyboard? No, that, that's where the shot list comes shot list. from. For me. Shot list. I do a very detailed shot list. I was actually talking with someone about this today, about uh, a, a horror film that I'm getting ready to prep in, uh, in Winnipeg. And they were saying, are we going to storyboard this? The only time I'll ever storyboard is if we have to pre vis something for like a, a visual effect where the, the visual effects artists need it. And then we'll actually storyboard it and stick to that. For me, for the rest of the movie, I don't like to have uh, standard boards because what I find is then it becomes everyone's there looking at that and they're trying to just recreate that image on the day. And what I like to do is have that image written that I put on the paper and then I'm dictating how I want it to be on the day because inevitably we're gonna get a more interesting shot um, in that moment collaborating with the DP, seeing even if the actor moves a little different when we're blocking it uh, as opposed to just having that image because in my, in my mind it, it, it's just too static and it's just too clinical. After you have that extensive shot list then do you do like um you know, when the actors are together and doing a rehearsal? Yeah. Do you let them rehearse the scene? I let them rehearse the scene for dialogue. For the most part, though, I'm telling them exactly where I want them to go. Because so they gotta I, come prepared? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they're rehearsing on their own then, basically, right? Yeah. Because especially on these TV movies, they're, they're so down and dirty and quick, you just don't have time for even a table read. Oh, yeah. I was, ask, I was going to ask about this. You as a director, you prepare the, your cast with a table reading or no? Not on these. Mm -hmm. On the indie features you do, music videos, commercials, obviously you don't, but, uh, and then TV movies you don't. So really, mm -hmm. it, if, you, if you're doing a feature and you have enough pr prep time, like these things, you, you gotta understand, these are full length feature films for TV. We have three week prep, 12 day shoot, mm -hmm. and then I have five days to do a director's cut. 
afterwards, and then it goes off to the rest of post. So the editor's assembling while we're shooting, and uh, usually we'll wrap, if it's a 12 day, we do two fives and a two, so we'll wrap on a Tuesday night. By the next Monday, there'll be a full editor's cut, and then I Better go in for five days, and then I just, you know, tweak it. Yeah. Ben? Um, <clears throat> earlier you were mentioning about uh, language and stuff. Um, I'm just curious how you would uh, define your own, uh, or dis define or describe your language, your style, your trademark. Uh, so just how would you do that? Uh, I'd say I, I steal from the best. <laughs> 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 Honest answer. Uh, you know, I take inspiration in all the masters, you know, and, and, and for me, the new Hollywood of the 70s, that was the period of cinema that to, to me is the greatest ever. And uh, so, yeah. I you think know, this, the Paul this was Scorsese. the golden era of cinema. Yeah. Well, the second golden era. Yeah, 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 the second one. Yeah. After the and then, of course, then you had all those films in the 80s, too, which were great. And then the 90s again with the independent movement. But, yeah, uh, I would say um, <laughs> that's about the most honest answer I can give you. I, I don't really know if I have a specific style. It's just I take what I, like, I'm more, I, I'm dubbed like the thriller guy, so I do mostly thrillers, horror. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't do a lot of yeah. romantic comedies. The romantic comedy we did, I was a producer, executive yeah. producer, but I brought in a director for it because it's not really my taste, and I know there's people that are going to do a better job at it. But uh, as far as the, 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 the thriller side of it, it's just I've seen so much of it, I just take inspiration from it, and each film dictates the style, basically. So I try to, I try to go in as um, just open to the possibilities and then just try to fashion it specifically to that movie. Because I don't want to repeat myself either. You know, inevitably you do, but I try not to, if I can. For the language, it's so hard to, maybe you will spend your whole life and you will not have a language as a director. Certainly not as a journeyman, probably, yeah. because journeymen, so. they want you to just come in and deliver and be uh, proficient, you know, but they don't want necessarily a style. They just want you to be good enough. So I think that's my question. <laughs> uh, nowadays, you can notice that the cinema goes to cheap production, Netflix, yeah. uh, Prime, just something to to put it on the, on the screen at home, and we don't see those real production barely now we can watch a nice movie that we will go to theater and we'll go oh my god you know can i elaborate here i think it's not a cheap production as a production I want to hear yeah yeah that's <laughs> like just i think it's more more cheap uh, paper like script it's a it's commercial yeah, that's why commercial. yeah. yeah. Well, it's commercial. that's why one of the big things and again going back to digital cinema and everyone ha you know it being more democratized now is that you're going to get a lot more fluff, right? So there's going to be more content, but it not necessarily means that it's going to be good content. Yeah. So um, is there still a place for that? And can you uh, separate yourself from that? Certainly, you know, and it, it really starts with the script. But yeah, I, I agree. There's a lot of a lot of garbage out there. And, and you know, I've been responsible for some of it, so. Again, <laughs> 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 you okay, to make it a living. Just got to be honest. Including <laughs> myself. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Um, being on the set is so uh, stressing. Is it? You know, of course. <laughs> Big yeah. time, man. No, I know. Like, we hear stories about famous directors, Coppola. Yeah. He was crying in, uh, on the set of uh, Godfather. Mm -hmm. uh, he thought he was going to get fired if he yeah. did. That's why, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> being on the set as a director, yeah. controlling all the crew, mm -hmm. A big number of actors, yeah. background actors. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with this? So How do you plan for your next shot without anyone noticing what's what's in your mind? Well, you have a good production team, good first AD, you know, a good production manager who's setting up the next day. You got, you know, your uh, your third uh, back at base camp, making sure that the actors are prepared. So, you know, you have this family around you that is basically alleviating all that stress for me personally, so that I can just focus on. The directing okay, and executing the vision. This is a dream on the set. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. If you have this. Yeah. Well, it's the only way to do it. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but what if yeah. your production team is not good? Yeah. 
What's good to do? Well, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to just get through it one way or the other. Because once you're in it, you're in it, and once you're yeah, I know. no, you know you what get I mean? the stress. How you deal with all you of just, that stuff? For me, it's like if I'm in it, like for me, the, the stressful part is leading up to it. You know, once I'm in the fight, it's I'm in it. So now it's just a matter of okay, what do what do we got to do to get it done? And, and what are the time restraints? And and okay. We got an hour left, and I, I have uh, nine setups, but I can only get three. You know, you just got to make it work. And yeah, if, the, um, yes. Yeah, so it's really just about doing. There is no secret sauce to it. Like it. Of course, if, <laughs> there's no secret sauce, I know. Yeah. But I mean, all this energy must be in the directing side. Yeah. But you know, you are consuming your energy with solving some stuff with the production. Because your production team is, is not good. Yeah, well, luckily, I've always had a good production team. So for me, I've been, I've been lucky in that regard. Uh, like I said, these shows are union shows. So, you know, you do have uh, people that are uh, very capable in, in their dif uh, different disciplines. Except the last one. Yeah, the last one. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like, Rawan, you're now. talking about your own experience now. And the last one, it was, <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. yeah I wasn't yeah, directing, though. So yeah, he was the producer. I, I was basically trying to keep all the balls in the air. And, uh, <laughs> but you know what? At the end of the day, the, yeah, the, the product we got we was, was yeah. great. And the network is super excited. The distribution company that gave us the minimum what guarantee. What is it? What's the show? It's called uh, You Can't Teach Love. Can't we made it show. under uh, the name Show and Tell. Show and Tell. It's just, you know, a, a cute little uh, romantic comedy. And um, again, it was the first movie that we were doing here. We were using a lot of crew that we were uh, uh, accustomed to. A lot of local people that were kind of learning <coughs> our, our system. Here Windsor? Yeah, we shot yeah. Windsor, yeah. Uh, in the Walkerville downtown area. Cool. Um, and uh, so it was just, you know, figuring it out and getting everyone on the same page. And there's always going to be those problems whenever you're going into a new market and, uh, and trying to do what you do somewhere else. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it only matters what's in the frame line, not, oh. how, not how difficult it was yeah. to to make the production, and uh, so I, I'm glad. But I got to tell you, there was a few days there I thought, oh my God, we're not, I know. <laughs> we're not gonna have anything. I know. Yeah. It was but tough, actually. Yeah. It was so tough. Yeah. Um, okay, and this will lead me to, to a question. Uh, what are your standards uh, to accept or to reject any project? Or you will say yes to all the projects? So as a job, yeah. yeah. Well, as, if it's a thriller, a TV movie thriller, then I'll do it. What if the script is bad? Yeah, that's what I was getting yes? to earlier. Yeah, 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 I do. Because it's, it's, my, it's my livelihood. I don't have another job, right? right? So, um, and you try to make it better too, right? Oh, yeah, of course. So there's that. And, and a lot of times you go in with the expectation, oh, my God, I, I, can, do, I, I can do this. I'll, I'll knock this out of the park. And sometimes you make it better, and sometimes it's the same. And... You know, hopefully it's not lower, <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it, it's an art form, right? So you, you just ne you never know what, what what you're gonna get at the end. You, you, no one goes out to make a turd, you know. And uh, there's a lot of bad movies out there. And they yeah, all but can you tell if it's like one thing? Like, obviously it's not the script because if you agreed to shoot it, you must have read it. Yeah. So where does it? start to fall apart for you. Like so you said, oh my God, I thought we didn't have it. Yeah. So and then all of a sudden you got it. What'd you get? Yeah, what? so sometimes in the execution uh, of being under these 12 day, 12 hour time uh, constraints, uh, you're, you're basically sometimes not being able to execute the full vision of the script because, um, and then also they're like, okay, let's just get rid of this because it costs too much. So even the script that was, um, that we all agreed upon then when you start to go into pre-production and you start to realize, okay, well, this location, we're not going to be able to move, um, it, it's set in a coffee shop, but we have to pair this with this other main location wrap because we, you know, we can move all the work trucks, but we don't want to move, uh, we call it circus, but it's base camp, all the, all the trailers and whatnot. Yeah. So, because it costs uh, $20,000 every time you want to move that thing. So you, they're basically, okay, we're not going to do the coffee shop now, but we're going to go around the corner here and we're going to try to shoot this scene here. Well, okay, well, that doesn't make sense. But they're like, no, 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 if you do this and this, it will make sense. And then they try to convince you it's going to make sense. And then you agree to it begrudgingly. And then you get in the editing room after and you realize, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. it, doesn't really, it doesn't really work. It passes. Like, it's fine. But then, you know, 
you read the comments on IMDb, which I try not to do after. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, who directed this piece of shit? You know, like, don't they, do they not know that the, the key to the uh, safety deposit, it's a house key, and they're using that for a safety deposit box. And it's oh, like, because geez. the prop master only had <laughs> yeah. that, because that's the key, you know, and you say it on the day, but they don't have anything else. So then you're like, okay, I got to use it. And then, and then it, yeah, that's what they talk about. Like, did the director not know this? And it's like, yeah, I knew. <laughs> but this is what we had to work with. So, you know, the limitations of low budget filmmaking, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. But even if you have mistakes with, with big budget uh, films. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, continuity all the time. Yeah. Well, Scorsese is notorious for having terrible continuity, Ooh. like the worst, but they don't care about it. And the thing is, the filmmaking is so stellar and the performances are so high that you don't notice it because you're so. Oh captured with, with what is happening on the screen that you're not even noticing that the cigarette's like this, when it's oh like yeah. this. The smoke's over here, the smoke's over here. You don't even yeah. notice it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah, for for TV films, how much of a control do you have on the edit? And if you do, how do you approach sound? Yeah, so I have full control uh, up, so shooting, and then to my director's cut. And then it goes to the producers, and then they can go in and you know tinker with it a little bit. Uh, I've been lucky because, like I said, I shoot the way I shoot, so um, it, it, it's very pointed, and they can't really do much to it yeah. after. But not only can they not do much to it after, they see that it cuts and it flows, and there's nothing really that they need to do. So I've only had one film where there was a couple changes, and, and uh, they, they made it worse. <laughs> Quite honestly. Yeah, according to the sound, how you deal with the sound on the Yeah, I'm in the mix. Uh, a lot of the directors on the TV movies are invited into the mix or uh, into the color correction suite. Uh, I, I get it in my contract that I want to be there, even though I'm not being paid for it, because you know I, I'm a bit of a control freak, <laughs> and I want to make sure that it's right. And also, if I'm there, then I can't bitch about it later, you know, if mm -hmm. I'm if yeah. I'm not there, then I'll just hate it for the rest of my life, and I won't even be able to ever watch it. Not that I watch these, you know, re repeatedly or anything like that, but um, it, you know. So for from from for, for me to sleep at night, I, I need to be there. So yeah, I'm in there. Yeah. Interesting. But again, we have the best guy in Vancouver. We have you know the best sound engineers, the best yeah. mixing studios, the best uh, po post production facilities. So you know you're, you're working with the best. So you just a lot of times you just get out of their way and let them be the artists that they are and, and do what they're being paid for, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if, if they're going off the rails a little bit, you just bring them back on. But a lot of nine times out of ten, I'm just there observing just to, just to be a part of it and just make sure that it, it goes smooth. Yeah. Can you be a saxophone director or movie maker without being in Toronto or Vancouver just from winter? Yeah, well, you guys, people are doing it. I mean, Gavin, for one. I mean, I know he, he's back and forth from L.A., but he started here and, uh, and was very successful and then, and then was doing huge music videos from here as well where the bands were coming into him. So, yeah, definitely, definitely can. And what we're trying to do is really create a system here where it's going to be commonplace in the next five years and then within the next ten, you know, uh, of... Uh, a real industry, you know, in, in, in we, we were talking about it a, a oh few yeah. times, and yeah. I think in the next three to five years, we could turn this place into a 300, 400 million dollar a year business. I mean, I can do that personally. Uh, I can feed this system. It's just a matter of certain municipal uh, government um, issues that we're having as far as uh, regional tax incentives, yeah. which they say they want, <laughs> but they're not, they're not doing it, so. I think it, it, we, we need more time. It's, it's a matter of time only. Yeah, 100%. It's a matter of time. But once those tax credits uh, yeah. kick off, oh, yeah. it's going to be... It's so always about tax nothing <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, so here's the thing. So we have very rich federal and provincial tax incentives. So the federal is the same, obviously, across the country, and each province has its own rich provincial tax incentives. Now, you get an additional 10% if you shoot outside of the GTA, but we're so far out of, out of Toronto that it doesn't make economical sense for them to come to Windsor. They'll go to Hamilton, where the crew can then drive back to Toronto, and they don't have to house them, they don't have to give them per diems, and they don't have to travel them every day. 
when you're here in Windsor, you have to per diem, travel them, put them in a hotel. That, that, that money has to come from somewhere and the production isn't gonna spend that when they can just go to Hamilton. So the, the city is on board for these regional tax incentives. It's in their Windsor Works plan. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with that. You can Google it, Windsor Works. There's like a 200 page PDF you can read. One of the five businesses they want to diversify the economy, one of the five new businesses they want to attract is film and television. And, um, and they want to, they, they, in all their language there, they're saying the right things as far as the regional tax incentive to lure in production. But uh, it's only a matter of time, I guess, until we see if that happens. Now, when you say like, uh, le like bringing people in and how, you know, accommodating their, their hotels, you're, you're saying that you're, you're bringing like uh, union, uh, like production companies here to, to fill those roles in the city? Yeah, some. So in the <coughs> short term, uh, you're, the heads of the department, like the keys, they're going to have to be approved by the network. So uh, if there's no one approved here, then you have to bring in those guys, like cinematographer, production designer, costume designer, um, sometimes the first AD, uh, production manager. Uh, but then, uh, but a lot of the below the line crew, like I think on our show, oh, yes. we had a small crew. I think we had a crew of like 35, 40 total. And we and probably, I would say two thirds were from Windsor. And I was very impressed with, like, yeah. with the skill yeah. level here. And actually, there was no problems with the Windsor. Actually, the we Windsor had problems with the, yeah, with the, the outsiders. Yeah, the, pro the professionals. Uh, the <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's it's a matter of time only just to, to have like uh, key members in the production from, from Windsor. Oh yeah. Well, it's like a matter of time only. Well, so we were prepping this movie, uh, a low budget thriller, and um, they wanted to do it completely here yeah. in Windsor yeah. with all keys. And so uh, we got, I don't know if anyone here knows Ken Anwin, but he we was- We had gonna, like yeah, all the crew. He was gonna be the cinematographer. Yeah. And for him, if he did this one, then he would be approved. Immediately, so it's a, <coughs> uh, uh, a matter of doing the one. Now you now you got network approval, and then you know we don't have to bring in as many people. Yeah. If no. you want to get involved with any of your films, how how would you do that? Or do you have a site where people go? Yeah. Well, I have my own personal site, mm -hmm. davidlangua.ca. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no information on the films there, though, as far as what we're doing. But uh, we put ourselves up on uh, Ontario Creates, okay. mm -hmm. and so. And, um, and it's a pretty small town. I mean, word of mouth travels pretty fast. Okay. So, yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 What, what, uh, what do you do? Uh, well, um, a lot of things. Okay. Um, designer, producer, writer. Um, Graphic novels. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Write scripts. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're a team. So. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah Maybe it would be in, uh, uh, our speaker in some of those nights. Next Monday. Oh, well, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll be here Monday. Yeah. We have a, a graphic novel that was shot from a film script. Okay. And we, it's a very unusual, we use real live character models. So we have a cast of 60 people. And uh, it's shot like a movie. Frank, Frank storyboarded the whole thing. He's the co-writer of the script. And um, yeah, so everything's shot really cinema. cinema it is a graphic cinema. novel though. It's yeah. not we just shot it in photo illustrations. That's the technique that I use. Cool. That kind of thing. Hoping that someday it'll be a series. Like, have you ever looked for new material? Or? Yeah, all the time. Yeah? Yeah. Outside of, like, you know, my day job of, of TV movies. Uh, cool. I have a, a few films in development right now in a series as well. So, yeah, always looking for... It's called Blood Sucking Lawyers. Blood Sucking Lawyers. Good title. <laughs> yeah, so how close uh, to the music are you when you're in your work, like do you, uh, when you're, I know that's at the back end, but, but do you have, uh, uh, do you use your people for music or do you have any control over that? On the TV movies, not so much. There's a composer that's already hired and uh, I never go sit in with the music. The first time I hear the music is actually when we're doing the five day mix at the end. So, uh, but yeah, always, always happy with, with what we're getting. And then there's a lot of just, um, you know, popular music as well that we might use in certain scenes. So I do get to uh, f fill the music with that in my cut 
uh, because there's a library of stuff that we can use. So I'll put that in there and then that usually sticks. But on my independent stuff, definitely very involved. Cool. When you say TV, are you talking about CBC or CTV? Or like Lifetime Homework. Oh, okay. Like Lifetime oh, Network, yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> if someone wanted to write a script, would, would you be opposed? Or would you be yay or nay for AI? For AI? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. AI is pretty scary to me. I'll yeah. tell you this. The one thing that I do, I do use AI for is to formulate some ideas to, get, to basically get like a summary of some of my ideas and then uh, go from there because, you know, that's a week's, a week's worth of work. I can basically uh, workshop in, in a few keystrokes and then have something that's workable. But as far as using AI like that, I'm not, I'm not really a fan. I, well, I you're the one that opposes. Stuff, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. 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 I'm writing the script. You're, you're the one who opposes it, so you didn't try it. The last people I, I asked, they did and just got ideas from it. Yeah, no, they that, didn't use the yeah. whole script or whatever yeah, no and that's what i'm saying like if i if i'm workshopping some ideas with myself and some plot points and uh three act structures or whatever i might use ai uh and I, i've used it probably because i was thinking of using times. it for my movie yeah well if it helps if it helps but i mean i don't, don't know where to go with from it. your own creativity you, know? you look like a pretty creative guy yeah, yeah. it's just it's zany and i just wanted uh, a musical okay you know and uh and a comedy and a spoof and everything. Mm -hmm. Just have fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever works for you. I mean, it is. I've been seeing some... Uh, Plus, we're making a documentary of this place. Mm. At the same time. Yeah. As we're doing it. Well, I don't know if AI is going to help with that. Who? I don't know if AI... <laughs> no, no, no. That. But that's what my intentions for this new movie. Oh, I see. Unknown Hero. Okay. It's called yeah, The Unknown well, Hero. Oh. A couple uh, of the characters are... Uh, are, are... Hi, Ian. Hello. <laughs> He's in, he's in my script, in my last movie, and, well, they're not here today. There's hardly anybody here. It's all right. Bill? They heard I was Paul coming. Luba, <laughs> he's, uh, he's in my script, and yeah. okay. small okay. class today. That leads us to now day question. It was all those new technology, AI, and how, how, how you see, like, the... It's gonna affect the industry. It's like okay. everything now is a blur. We are, are stepping a new new era. Yeah. Everything is changing quickly. I don't wanna be like those old guys that refuse technology, <laughs> but at the same time, some of those. No, I hear you. It's um, it's an interesting time, certainly. You know. It's gotta be instantaneously. It's gotta be on the net, and it's gotta be bigger than it is to people to be captivated because everybody's seven seconds of attention span on the internet. Yeah. Everybody's over inundated with this, what's going on, the left and the right, and this and that, and, and, and you know. Well, I'll tell you what I do find AI useful for is uh, Zoom meetings. We use a program called Fathoms, yeah. and uh, it's basically like a note taker. Yeah. And uh, oh, cool. gives, it just spits out basically the, the moments of, of, the, uh, of the meeting. So I would, we've adopted that, uh, me and my business partner. Is that in in? It's uh, called Fathoms. You have to download that. Yeah, I, he does it, so I don't know. I just because I do, like I said, I do uh, interviews over the yeah. podcast on yeah, it might through be, Zoom. Yeah, might be good for you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think AI, AI didn't is it, isn't something new in in, in cinema. AI. Yeah. Well, it's fairly new. I think the era started with uh, uh, Avatar. Well, like the idea true. of AI started to build up the concept of AI started with Avatar. Well, it was ninety five percent ninety five percent of the of the film was computerized was yeah. AI. Uh, yeah, yeah, but AI. It, but it was actual uh, designers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But kind of technology is lead, leads to yeah. To there's no uh, real actors yeah. anymore. It's not right? the same thing. Because I saw I saw something in the New York Times yesterday. Someone sent me uh, on. Uh, the digital paper or whatever of these two woolly mammoths that were AI created. Did, did anyone see that? And it, it was unbelievable. And then they're showing like a swooping shot of a city as if you're on a drone or on a, yeah. on a, a, a techno crane coming down and these people walking and stuff. You know? Now that one wasn't as impressive, but it's only a matter of time before oh, yeah. the rotoscoping gets better and, and the images are great. And 
I mean, we're, with all this deep fake and stuff that's been going on, and <laughs> yeah. people, you know, it, it's here to stay. I mean, there's no, there's no. It will be, it will be different <coughs> generation. Yeah. I, I myself uh, try to. The reason that Andy, I had a guy that. Um, too, oh yeah, yeah go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, well I was just gonna say because in the music industry, like uh, I'm a composer uh, okay. for film and TV, and um, but I remember when drum machines came out, and that kind of like you know it's not really AI, but you know no longer did we hire drummers, and that and I just press a a key and it plays the congas and. And I, as much as I hate it, because I like creating my own mm -hmm. rhythms, I use it because it's time effective. And and I, like you say, I think it's here. We have to live with it, you know. Yeah, and you can still be creative musically with that, because someone who has no uh, musical composing experience, I wouldn't be able to go in and use that drum machine the way you would. So it's it doesn't change the creative aspect of it. And you know, I, th there's a, a million cameras out there, but it doesn't mean that anyone would know how to use it. Same as Painting, you know, everyone for 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 centuries have had as, uh, access to paints, but there's only so many masterpieces, right? So I kind of look at it like that. It, it'll be a tool in the toolbox, and um, you know, hopefully, it doesn't get uh, overused and, and exploited. Yeah. Do you have any new films playing in winter? The playing here? Time? No, they're all playing on TV. But uh, so you're not shooting anything in the city? Oh yeah, we're oh shooting here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a couple coming up in spring. Two more uh, thrillers for a lifetime. And, uh, if right. anybody wants to be a part of life, does that be union or non-union? Uh, it'll be partially union, partially non-union. So uh, it'll be it'll, everything will be listed on Ontario Create. So if you if you uh, look for the weekly uh, film breakdowns, which are mostly Toronto and Northern Ontario, but you're going to start seeing Windsor a lot more on there. Yeah, and then obviously wherever our production office is at the time, mm -hmm. and the production number, uh, it'll be there as well as the email. Yeah, what I what is the great road to be in DGC? The great road? Yeah. So I, I won't say the easiest, because yeah. nothing is easy. Uh, you know, you have to have, I believe, it's changed a little bit now, but I think you have to have 180 minutes yeah. of produced, like exhibited, either theatrically or mm -hmm. broadcast, mm -hmm. or uh, a notable film festival. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then you can apply. And that includes short films and whatnot. But the, yeah, but you'd have to have a lot of shorts. Yeah, I mean, two, that's two features. Yeah, and then yeah. you're in. But yeah, do you need a different reference from one side? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay. oh, there's another way too. You can you can be hired on one of these uh, signatory productions, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get your union card that way as well. Mm -hmm. But you're only going to get the job if you have the body of work too. Yeah. So. That's actually how I got it, because I was in the music video world for years. I did three independent features, and I thought, man, I'm on my way. This is at the beginning of my career. I was like, I'm just killing it right now. Then the phone didn't ring, <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? And uh, realized how hard it was to actually be in the feature film world, and pivoted, and uh, was lucky enough to get into music videos when it was at the, the height, you know, when there was, you know, real budgets involved, and... Uh, and did that for a while. So I was able to really accumulate um, a, a massive body of work and, uh, and that helped as well. And I would also suggest that for anybody, if, if you're not already in the music video world and, and um, you wanna be a filmmaker or if you are a filmmaker but you wanna get uh, more clips on your reel, you know, music videos are a great way to do it because one, you're gonna get the exposure of that band's uh, fan base. Two, you get to work with a lot of different aesthetics that you wouldn't normally get to work in a, in a straight narrative film. So you'll amass a lot of different looks, which even if they're short pieces on your montage reel, it's going to look like, oh shit, this guy's done a lot of work. And you get to experiment as well. You get to experiment, yeah. 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 Randy? Sorry? Yeah. Oh, um, oh, I was just going back to the, uh, the, the AI conversation. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to bring this back from that. No, no. But, um, so I had a friend of mine that was working in uh, as an actor on Blind, which was a, the Apple TV uh, Apple TV show. Yeah. And uh, he was saying that like a lot of a lot of the background actors were um, uh, see they were they were created uh, in CGI mm -hmm. and they're um, you know and re repurposed reused. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's kind of the way that the, the you know. The uh, film features are going um, with, with. And Fincher's actors. been doing that for ages. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that, that's also from a cost standpoint too, right? Because you know you want these big, massive crowd scenes, but you can only afford so many extras, and especially when you're in the union world, they're they're costly. So you get, say, you need to fill up a stadium, you get like a hundred, two hundred of them, and then they just keep repurposing them, and then just populate the. Uh, whereas before they used to have the dummies. <laughs> and then, you know, five dummies then have a real person there. And then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, was it, was all blurred, it was all blurred out in the back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Shallowed up the field. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have a question. Uh, on the set, yeah. if you have your first AD mm -hmm. is telling you something, you didn't think about it. Yeah. Will you listen to him? Or you said, no, I am the director. Shut no, up. no, I listen to everybody. That's what they're there for. <laughs> yeah, of course. At least knows what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't worked in that Don't make it personal. <laughs> Why, was Bill giving you a hard time? Or this guy, this guy, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I know you. I know you. I know you. On the contrary, oh, on the contrary. Well, the no, but one of, of our... Someone told us that you, as a director, you don't have to listen to anyone. Well, you don't, technically. Yeah, the producer, because at the end of the day, when you're you're the head of the creative and the head of the business, the business always wins at the end of the yeah, day. Of so, of but it's all dollars and cents, right? But, uh, no, I mean, I listen to everybody. Why not? I mean, but the thing, too, is, is like, I don't get spoken to a lot like that because I go, like I said, I go in with a definitive plan and I know how to execute it. And I'm not sitting there, mm, humming, uh, you know, I'm in there, I'm directing. I'm like, okay, we're going to go here, we're going to do this. Put a put a, an 85 on. We're gonna do a push in here. Put some track here, and and then let the DP do it. He's got to do lighting wise with the gaffer. But yeah. you know, it's just a matter of if you know what you're doing, and the crew has your confidence, then and and you're on time, then I mean, there's no problems. Ever. How much directing do you do with actors? Well, all of it. All of it yeah. No, in terms of like you just said, I'll drag this in, do that, do this. Yeah. Like how how much of a balance? Every single scene then is just as much yeah, so, scenery or whatever. Yeah, so that would be like me doing second teams, uh, blocking for crew, and then after we just did the blocking with the actors, then we, we get them into hair and makeup after, or we get them off set, and then so I'll do it. So yeah, it's both, it's 50-50. You have to be proficient in both, I find. If you want to have a good film. There's a lot of really good technical directors that don't really direct the actors, and then you know that can open up its own can of worms. Uh, or someone who just works with the actors and rely more on the cinematographer to do a lot of the technical side and even um, the, the shots and whatnot. But uh, I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> I, like, I like to be involved. So in you must have been cinematographer first, like to understand all that? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I understand it, but I've never been a DP. My hand is almost never on the camera, ever. I, I, there's people much more talented than me that are, that are good at that. So. But at the same time, I appreciate cinematography, and uh, I know enough about it that I can speak the language. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'll, I always have a DP. Always. Just remind me, um, I've mm -hmm. been working with a, a short animation, and the producer used to say to us, like, is the producer also the animator? Okay. But he paid money. He says, you can say whatever you want when you're discussing, since you will do whatever I want. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. it's true, right? He's writing the chat. You can listen to everything. You, you can chat and, and express yourself. And then I pay my, the money and you will do what I want. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I was wondering with that directing, how much have you had to uh, direct performances and uh, we take and yeah, I mean, that's just part of the job for sure. Hopefully not too many, especially in the TV movie world, because like I said, it, it's pretty fast paced and you know, you're doing an average of anywhere between eight and 13 pages a day, and that's in 12 hours, so with full coverage. So, um, you, you know, you hire good actors and I try to get out of their way if there's a little adjustments here. You know, they're being hired for a reason, right? So, um, I, you, know, you know, and you do some, you talk with them in between takes and when second teams in lighting and whatnot, and uh, and I, I've been very fortunate that there hasn't been a lot of um, problematic issues in that regard. But yeah, yeah, you just deal with it as as they come, you know, and and you know it's your job to get the best performance and to get the best out of everyone. So if you don't have it, and you know some some you might do one and one and done, as they say, you Kinda know, fire them up a little bit, poke them a little bit. No, you know, I don't do that. 
provocateur. <laughs> it, it, that works for a lot of people. That's not really my my style, but yeah. uh, no, it's um, you know just you, you ask them what they need and and you just try to support the best way you can. Yeah. Are you a director? Uh, music. Okay. What's up, Gavin? I'm late again. <laughs> I was talking about you earlier. <laughs> All bad. <I> <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It was fun. It was Thank fun. you. Thanks, thanks for you. having me yeah. on my show. Welcome to Play Productions. Please add and subscribe to my station. Thank you. Thank you.